Now, hello and welcome to this mini tutorial series where I want to do a two part tutorial, firstly about timers and then about referencing other scripts from your Unity scripts. Now, those two concepts are some of the first things that you need to do once you manage to understand the basics of Unity. So I hope you're going to have fun with me creating a little project. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention something because uh, you can also uh, code this with me, kind of like one of those sing-along songs that we all love and cherish in our hearts. Uh, so that way you just download the project that I put in the description below and then you open it with Unity and you can code along with me if you feel like it. Now, this game is a two-player game. You can see you can move around with those two players. The left one is controlled with WASD keys. And you can see he can jump around and he needs to gather points. And then we have another player that can also jump around and should gather points too. Now, the game works like this. There are orange points that are attracted to the fox player. And there are those blue points that are attracted to the opossum player. And uh, the goal is to steal the points of the other guy and also gather your own points. So it's a really simple game, but I just want to make a point, okay? <laughs> um, also, we have a little panic button, this uh, button down here. And if I press space, everything goes twice as fast and gets really chaotic. And yeah. We're going to explore uh, at the one hand how timers work and on the other hand we're going to look at how we can reference scripts in Unity. Now this will be a very practical guide so I won't go too much in depth about the theory behind it. Um, however I might ramble on a little bit anyway so yeah that's how I am kind of. Um, and yeah, let's get right into timers. Timers. Now we're first going to look at how we can introduce uh, the game time. So a timer that just counts upwards. After that, we are going to create a timer that spawns uh, objects periodically. So every three seconds spawn something. And lastly, we're going to look at how we can implement a cooldown on, for example, an ability, which would be this panic mode down here. So let's get started with it. Okay, so for that, let's just see what the game looks like if I play now. Uh, you can see nothing really happens. I can move, but nothing happens at all. So it's not really a game now. So let's open the timer script. And this timer script should be responsible for this timer to go up. So let's open it with Visual Studio. Right, and in here I've already created a reference to this timer text. So this is uh, this shiny thing up here. And now we want to track the time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll create a private float um, timer. And then I say, in the update for this timer, let's actually use the underscore here, timer, add the time dot delta time to it. And then every frame say underscore timer text dot text equal to underscore timer. And this will be an error now because this one's a string. And this is a float. So I need to say dot to string. And now if I hit play, we should immediately see, I mean, I kind of get the timer, but it looks really weird. So let's make this a little bit better by using a format. Now, if I use this to string method, um, you can see uh, there is an overload of this method where I can put in a format. And the easiest way to do is to just say, make, 0.0. .0. Now this means one, uh, one, one digit before the comma, and then round it to one digit after the comma. I could also say make three digits before the comma and one digit after the comma. Now let's get in here. 
look at it again and you can see uh, it already looks quite a bit better maybe just remove this here probably even this and so this is probably what we're going to aim for so that's already the easiest timer now if we start we can see uh, the seconds count upward now let's talk about the second kind of timer uh, the one that periodically spawns something or more generally periodically does something now i'm going to do this with this point spawner and this point spawner should spawn like every second one of those points that you can then pick up so let's jump into it um, I've prepared already a little bit something here. Now I've already got the prefab that should be instantiated. Uh, they can have different colors. And then I can determine a width, uh, which determines uh, how, on which position on the x-axis uh, the, th the stuff is actually spawned because it's, it's randomly separated on the x-axis so in the update method i do pretty much the same thing i create a private float underscore timer variable and i count this timer upwards uh, time dot delta time and now this timer tracks the seconds that have passed now i could say if the timer is greater than for example, three seconds, then I could spawn one of those points. And I could set the timer back to zero. So it counts, it waits three seconds. Once the th three seconds have passed, it spawns a point, sets the timer back to zero, and the same procedure begins for anew. Now let's save everything and hit play again. Now I've got these point spawners. That's what I was talking about. If I hit play now, we should see that every three seconds, a point should spawn. I mean, they don't do anything and they even have an error. We're going to tackle that in the next video, but we can see uh, something happens every three seconds. Now let's improve the solution a little bit because having this time hard coded isn't the necessarily the best thing. So let's create another public variable let's call it spawn interval and let's say every 0.5 seconds we are going to spawn something so instead of having here this hard-coded three we use this variable which can be changed in the inspector now if i go back to unity um, i can see the spawn interval is 0.5 seconds so every half second it should spawn something okay Again, don't mind these error messages. We're going to tackle them later. Now, let me ask you one question. What do you think would happen if I write here zero? So with a spawn interval of zero, here would, uh, we would have timer greater than zero. So that should always be true. Now, how many items do you think will spawn? Or how many points do you think will spawn? Now let's pause the video and think about this. It's a trick question. Okay, so if you think you've come up with an answer, let me solve it for you. Now, the, the intuitive thing that you would think may be that, that an infinite amount of points is going to spawn because uh, if this is zero, the interval is zero, so the, uh, every frame infinite amount of points are spawned however this is not the case do mind we do this in the update method so every frame when this update method is called we just check if the timer is greater than the spawn interval and then we spawn a point so we can never spawn more points uh, than than one point per frame okay but in our case it really doesn't matter because we'll set the spawn interval to 0.5 seconds okay so hit play again and it works again right so let me activate this one again 
okay save everything so we now can create a basic timer and we can create a timer that does something after every few seconds now the last thing and that is uh, the hardest thing to do is to make a timer for a cooldown on an ability for example and i'm going to use this for this panic mode down here which should only active be activatable every 10 seconds or something now let's look how we can do this now this is going to be a little bit more complicated so if you've already had some problems understanding those basic timers maybe just take your time watch the video again try to implement them on your own until you understand them fully before you watch the next segment because you might get really confused otherwise so okay let's start this now i'll open the panic mode script and this script is here on my panic mode game object where i have those uh games now let me talk about a little bit how i did those now you can see i have this game and if i increase the fill amount it it starts to grow from the bottom up so this is an effect that can be really easily done in unity which is really nice and the way i did it is um, I have a grayed out gem that's uh, on the top here. And this is just an image, okay? Then I also have a filled gem. This is also an image, but you have to set the image type, not simple, but instead set it to filled. And then I set it to vertical. You could also use, for example, radial 360. And this would create like this these ability cooldowns from League of Legends or something, where they, as you can see here, they do this 360 degree loop and once they're fully charged you can use them again but i think for this game um probably the vertical uh, method uh, will work a little bit better because you can see just uh, more clearly how it works so yeah that's it so i just have to adjust this fill amount in order to make this ability ready good so we start with a fill amount of zero and let's jump into the script now i already have here a reference to this filled gem and if i want to change this fill amount i can just say filled gem dot fill amount then i could say dot equal 0.5 and it would be half full for example okay so we need at least two variables so let's start with the public float and let's call it cooldown and let's say it has a cooldown of like 10 seconds and then we also need a private float timer now why is the cooldown public and the timer private the cooldown should be adjustable by the game designer you know the game designer might say ah the cooldown is a little bit too big let's make it smaller or something else so he needs to adjust it however i usually don't want the game designer to change or to see the timer because that's just an internal process that has nothing to do with balancing or anything it's just a variable that helps us uh, realize this cooldown so the game designer shouldn't really see it um i'll talk about that maybe later a little bit when i start to ramble on so the next thing we again just say timer plus equals time dot delta time save that one and if we do that uh, it already counts up then i could say if the timer is bigger or equal than the cooldown then we should be able to uh, to press the button now it gets a little bit complicated but trust me you're going to be fine if you just uh, pay much attention now so this fill amount needs to be a value between zero and one zero means uh, it has the full cooldown one means the ability is ready so we need to determine how much percent of the time has already passed so how much percent of the cooldown has passed so the way we can calculate this is we can just say um, float um, gem fill percent equals underscore timer divided by the cooldown that way we get the 
the readiness in percent. So how much of the cooldown has passed in percent. However, this might lead to some problems because imagine we have a cooldown of 10 seconds, but we wait 20 seconds before we press the button. Then we would have 20 divided by 10 and that results in two. And then we would set this not to the full amount, like that would be one, but to two. That is not the best thing to do. So we need to uh, do an extra step. And that's rather easy. I just say mathf.min. And this method uh, has two parameters and it just takes the lower one of the two. So I'll take uh, the timer and I'll take the maximum amount that uh, the timer can have. So I'd say that's underscore cooldown. And I never want it to be bigger. So let me walk you through this. Now let's, uh, let's go through two special cases. Now first, let's say uh, the timer is at five seconds and the cooldown is at 10. So the timer is at five, cooldown is at 10. It determines the smaller value of those two. This is the five seconds here. So it uses five divided by 10, which is 0.5. Okay, so the, the gem will be half full. That's fine already. Now let's consider the next example. Let's say the timer is 20 and the cooldown is 10. So this would then stand here. And because we say math.min, it uses the lower one of these two. So although the timer is at 20, it still uses this 10 because we've used this one. So let's do it like this. And then we have 10 divided by 10, which means here is going to stand one. So the thing will be full. Okay, now that's already taken care of. Now the timer should already work. However, now we need to consider what happens when the cooldown has passed. Now, the first thing is we need to say the timer should be zero again. So the cooldown starts anew, but then we need to do something rather difficult. Now, what, what this panic mode is, it just says that uh, the game should run twice as fast as it normally would. Now, how we can achieve this is to say time dot time scale equals two. That way the game just runs twice as fast as it normally would. And then we would say something like wait five seconds. And then we want time dot time scale again to be one. All right, so this is what we want to achieve. But in Unity, that's not that simple to do. <laughs> Um, if you're in a console application, you could do something like this, just like wait five seconds. But in a game, you can't tell the game to just wait five seconds, because if you wait five seconds, then the game stands still for five seconds and then it would run again. So we need to like put this in a parallel task that like runs parallel to this script. And one of the ways you can do this is with a coroutine. So let me just cut this out and create a coroutine. So don't get too confused. I'll explain it right away. I need to create an I enumerator. And now don't never, uh, this is an error that can happen quickly. Don't use it I enumerable and I enumerator needs to be used. Okay. And let's call it start panic mode um co i I'll, I'll just use this call that means this is a core routine okay and in here i'll paste this and the good thing is inside of these i enumerator uh methods i can say something like this yield return new wait for seconds five so here i can do this just wait for five seconds and then do this line of code however you can't do this you return you wait for five seconds in here in the normal update method you can only do this inside of a coroutine okay 
Right, so now we need to start this coroutine and this can be done easily. I just have to call start coroutine and then let's start this start panic mode coroutine. And I also have to use those brackets. And that way I start a coroutine, then this method kind of runs in parallel to my script. Now, if you're if you're if you want to go a little bit deeper on understanding that stuff, you need to understand how threads in C sharp work. And they are rather an advanced topic, but um I'll 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 ramble on about it in a in a few minutes. Okay, let's just check if this now works. So I save everything, I go back to Unity, I clear the error messages. Uh, but we're going to get some of them anyways. But now this crystal should fill up over time. And it seems like it's doing so. It takes 10 seconds until it is full. And then it started the coroutine and it, uh, it should have increased the time scale. If you look up here, the time goes by very much faster and then it slows down again. Okay, so now we don't want this to automatically start. Instead, we want it to only start once we press the spacebar. So we add something more here. We say if uh, input dot get key down key code oops key code dot space only then we want to start this coroutine all right and now it should work perfectly fine it should uh, fill this crystal bar now let's reduce this cooldown a little bit and now you can uh-huh Ah, okay. Now, of course, I did an error here because I set the timer to zero again. So we need to put this down here and make brackets around it. And yeah, now it should actually work. Uh, yeah, these little defects. So now we can see I reduced the cooldown. And uh, yeah, the gem filled up. Now watch at the time. Now if I press space, the time goes by much faster and after a few seconds uh, it needs to uh, it the time scale goes back to normal again now if i can press space again uh, it increases the time scale again and it's back to normal all right so these are the three kinds how you can do timers now let me ramble on a little bit about um about coroutines and threads now it might be might get a little bit confusing if you're not too much into programming or C sharp. So if that's everything you needed, feel free to tune out now. Otherwise, um, let me tell you something about threads and coroutines. Now, threads are a way in C sharp to execute code really parallel. So for example, you can execute one method on the first core of your CPU and another method on the second core of your CPU. That's what threads are for. They do it really parallel. Now, these coroutines are kind of the way how you can achieve a similar result in Unity because the problem is Unity um, doesn't allow threading per se. So in Unity, you can't use any Unity method or almost no Unity methods from another thread because Unity isn't thread safe. Not yet. I mean, they're working on the job system, which should be released. I mean, there's a beta already and stuff going on, but it should be released some at some point in the future, next or the year after that. So it may take some time, okay? So this is one of the main problems of Unity and why it's not that performant. However, um, you can cheat around this a little bit with these coroutines. But the main one of the main reasons you use threads is because you want to squeeze out more performance of your CPU because you can run uh, 
a method on each of your cores and that's nice so you can achieve a hundred percent uh workload of your cpu otherwise only one cpu might uh, one cpu core might work for your game and that's very very bad because you only use a quarter of your cpu's capabilities so some people now think if you use coroutines it works the same way but that's not true coroutines only work on the on one on the same cpu core that your unity instance is running on so you won't get any performance at all it's quite the contrary you lose performance because you have to do stuff uh, to create them and to close them so you'll definitely not squeeze out more performance with coroutines so the only thing that they do is they make it easy to just wait a few seconds or wait until the end of the frame okay so that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it and learned something let me just recap what we did we created a basic timer that just counts upwards then we created a timer that counts up and does something at a specified interval like every few seconds and lastly we created a timer that uh, is used as a cooldown for an ability for example now in the next video we're going to talk about how we can reference different scripts and access variables of other scripts because that's quite a unique beast, beast in unity so i'll see you in the next video and there we're also going to finish this project Thank you.